There are some words that we seem to give a transcendent quality to. Uh, beauty is one of them. Love may be another one. Maybe truth another one, and so on. Uh, this transcendent quality is not actually something really transcendent. It's just something useful for nature. So I want to bring the notion of beauty down to earth because beauty is uh, a kind of function of nature. Anyway, the philosophers and the poets and the uh, maybe spiritual people throughout the ages have come out with silly sayings like uh, truth is beauty. Truth is nothing to do with beauty. In fact, when you find out what beauty is in a moment, you realize that truth has no correlation whatsoever with beauty. In fact, it would be truer to say that beauty is a deception, nothing to do with truth. So, I think we all know what beauty is. I mean, it's, it's a strange word in a way. Um, when something is pleasing, either visually or uh, through uh, hearing something, then we say it's beautiful. So maybe some particular piece of music you would consider to be beautiful. Maybe some kind of scenery like the one on the screen you might consider to be beautiful. Why, why is it beautiful exactly? Well, there's a very rich tapestry of colours there. And there's the water of the lake or, or whatever it is. Or maybe the sea. And so it's giving a very strong impression of the richness of life. And that pleases us. As does music that is, oh well, yeah, uh, Beethoven's uh, Third Symphony, say. Very kind of strong um, statements about our existence. So we like things that are in truth, kind of life-affirming. We call them beautiful. So beauty, and this is important in the whole thing, beauty is nearly always life-affirming. It's a trick of nature. So um, beauty is designed to make us feel good, to enhance our power, to inspire us. I'll say more about that in a moment. But really, beauty is a deception. All this inspiration or whatever we might get from listening to music or seeing a beautiful scene serves the purpose of motivating us. If uh, there was no motivation that came from it, then clearly there'd be no point of seeing something that was beautiful. So, beauty is a deception. You know, the bees are attracted to flowers, presumably. they, In some way, they find them beautiful, or they wouldn't be attracted. Uh, attraction of the sexes. There's always a deception. <laughs> There's always deception involved in the interplay that goes on between the sexes. So, there you can see, beauty is very often associated with some level of deception. So attraction of the sexes. And actually, beauty is a mechanism to smooth over the real nature of our existence. And this isn't the podcast to go into that, but what's the real nature of our, of our existence? Well, we're born, we decay, we have pleasures and we have pains. The pains are typically much more significant than the pleasures. And then we die. That's, a, that's you know, the hard fact of reality about our existence. We'd find it very hard to bear that unless nature was kind of pushing us along in some way through things like beauty. They motivate us and we need that. So beauty enhances our feeling of power. He makes us feel good, gives us some kind of motivation. And the ugly diminishes our power. So, you can see this picture with um, 
uh, roses. On the left hand side is a picture of a rose in full bloom. Beautiful, isn't it? We meant to think that. <coughs> and then on the right is a rose that is wilting. Not so pretty, is it? The one on the left denotes the full power of life. The one on the right is life ebbing away, and so we don't find it so beautiful. So, um, you know, ugly things like a deformed fetus, you may not find that beautiful. You might say, well, I do find it beautiful in a way. Well, that's pity maybe, or something else going on. It's not really beauty, it's something else. So ugly things like a deformed fetus, the wilted flower that I've just um, uh, shown you, roadkill, all negative statements about life. And yet, they're as much a part of life, if not more a part of life, than the whole idea of uh, beauty. So, um, you could see beauty really as nature's cosmetics. It has to kind of tart itself up so that we don't just sink down one, one day and say, well, this is all terrible. No, no, go for a walk in the countryside and feel that energy of nature. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I think um, all I'm saying is we need to understand it so that we're not conned. Um, I've got a quote here from Spinoza, good old Spinoza. And he says, um, I do not attribute to nature beauty, ugliness, order or confusion. It is only with respect to our imagination that things can be said to be beautiful, ugly, well-ordered or confused. And he's saying it as it is. That is the way it is. What is beautiful to us is probably a terror to some other kind of creature. So it's all very um, subjective. And in fact, he has another quote where he says exactly what I'm saying. Things that are a picture of life in its full power, we find beautiful. Things that are a picture of life uh, that is dying or becoming less, we find ugly. Now, we ought to really live a life where we're not hanging around waiting for nature to lift its skirt a little bit. Oh, look, look at that beautiful, <laughs> that beautiful countryside. <clears throat> Nature's lifted its skirt a little bit and we're, we're like idiots, fools. Instead of looking to nature to give us a sense of power and well-being, we should try and find our own source of power and well-being. And then what you'll find is that nature looks quite pathetic in comparison. Nature lifting its skirt a little bit. And we see straight through it. And we have a greater source of power and pleasure within ourselves. <coughs> 